part for me some of the areas in our uh, in our industry that have changed that you see need stronger stronger brands and, and stronger teams. Sure. Well, I think one of the big things that's happening right now, of course, is a lot of mergers and acquisitions. You have yeah. a lot of pharma companies who are purchasing other pharma companies, a mm -hmm. lot of consolidation in, in marketing teams and in, in sales teams. Um, a lot of disruption in those teams, and I think that is a really big issue. Uh, when you have a when you have a brand team that is sort of disrupted, you have a brand that can be disrupted. Ah, uh, yeah. And Good the point. period of time it takes for that team to congeal and to put their plans together, you've suspended a brand's activity potentially mm -hmm. for that period of time. Okay. So part of my business is just helping those brand teams come together quicker, faster, okay, so that they can promote their brand and move their brand forward faster. Now, what, so what are the, some of the, I, I, this is where your world and my world kind of meet. I'm assuming some of that involves training of some sort. How, how do you get the brand team to, to work together? Uh, I, I do a lot of workshops. Oh, you actually. do? Okay. I do. Cool. Um, I, uh, one of the things I do, one of my workshops, looks at how to build the team and how to bring the team together. Mm -hmm. uh, I call it a partnership credo. Uh, and, and in that workshop, I bring all the players together and we identify what is this team going to be about? What mm -hmm. is the brand about? What are we going to hold ourselves accountable to? Mm -hmm. What are the th risks that we're willing to take? And we put all of that out on the table so that we have, um, we have a way of defining how to work together moving forward. Okay. And I, I find that to be very successful. That's Everybody comes great. away from that meeting feeling like, okay, we know who we are. We know what we're about. Mm -hmm. We know what risk we're willing to take. We know what opportunities we're, we need to pursue. And um, it's, it's, it's a very affirming kind of workshop. Yeah. Well, I'm curious now, with, with that response, do you find yourself doing any remedial team, tra team training? Oh, you yes, know? absolutely. You, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm finding that too. Absolutely. Clients are calling me and said, you know, before we get to the initiative that we want you to actually work on, we're having some, some problems within our own team. So could right. you come in and do some team building? Sure. Because, absolutely. you know, we're, we, we've got people that come from several parts of the world even, work on many global brands, right. and boy, and, and they're right. When I do the needs assessment, they're right. They're, I come in and I look and I say, whoa, you guys are like off the map. Everybody's on a different sheet of paper. Yep, um, exactly. uh, Just taking different perspectives, which can be good because you want those different perspectives, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. everybody has to be, mm -hmm. you know, uh, saying the same key messages, sure. right? Knowing the same key yep. messages. So. And I tend to, to work some with like tier two pharma companies mm -hmm. or biotech companies where right. their brand teams tend to be less seasoned uh, in mm -hmm. the first place. And oh, so okay. oh, that's uh, they may have a seasoned VP of marketing, but the yeah. team under him, him or her is not quite as seasoned. Okay. And so the challenge there is for him is how do I lift my team up? Ah, or I bring them all up okay. to a level where we're performing the way we need to for the brand. Okay, that sounds so. good. That sounds good. Well, there, boy, your world and my world are really intersecting there, yeah. uh, because we're, we're, I'm finding a, a, a significant percentage of, of our business now mm -hmm. is in that that very direction, which is internal. It's not sure. where we're focused really, but uh, I'd say year over year it, it marches up. It notches up, you know, three five percent year right. over year that that internal training that's going on. I think another big change is mm -hmm. that uh, the, the environment as a whole for physicians, for the healthcare environment is changing, of course. Mm -hmm. And I think what that means is, uh, and what we're seeing the impact of that is, that there are more and more decision makers. Yeah. Uh, you've got not only DL physicians, and of yep. course you have payers, but now you have nurses who are big decision makers, and PAs who are, who are acting as physicians mm -hmm. in, in many instances. So for a brand manager, that means that your communication has to go to a broader audience. Wider and field. it can't be exactly the same communication delivered the same way to all no. those audiences, right? Yeah. yeah. So you have to find new and better ways to, mm -hmm. to deliver that. I think the other big thing, of course, is that doctors are busier these days. Their caseloads mm -hmm. are higher, uh, so that means that a pharma has a harder time using their traditional sales rep as the vehicle for communications. Yeah. Um, there is a report that I was reading the other day, uh, let me quote it for you, Sure. Uh, that 55% uh, of physicians interviewed stated that they see less than two reps per week. Wow. And this was from a report from SKNA in 2010. Mm -hmm. So when you have that kind of environment, you see re pharma responding by uh, decreasing the size of their yep. sales forces. Yep. But that doesn't mean that uh, the communication has to decrease. In fact, you have to find other ways Even of getting so. those communications wow. out yeah. when you don't have that channel uh, is like it was. Yeah, and, and you know what? 
John, we're, we're seeing that directly because years ago we would be invited into an initiative of, of, of training advocates and it would be just the physicians. Mm -hmm. Now we're having meetings where they're actually meetings run in tandem where we have a physician's meeting, we have PAs and nurses on another side, and, and we're having to design two different training protocols exactly. for, for both sides because like you said the message isn't exactly the same the endpoint is the same but right. the message isn't exactly the end, right. and the way you bring about that message isn't the right. same so that's getting to be commonplace this this parallel meeting going on it does add a level of complexity because you have to think through the communications equation right. just as you said you don't speak to PAs the same way you speak to physicians right you know and that can sound kind of I'm not sure what the term is. A little bit pejorative, but it's mm -hmm. it's it's not really. It's just that there's a different mindset, sure, right? And so you're going to bring them to the final endpoint, the key message, right, with a different protocol, right, for sure. And the other thing about that is it's not just the difference in the audience. It's the difference in how you communicate via the channel that you're communicating exactly. with as yeah. well. So. Yeah. You know, if it's a sales rep, you're communicating in a certain way. Mm -hmm. If it's a, a digital, you're having to communicate in a completely different way. That's true. And I think that's another big thing that's happening, of course, um, as we all know, is that technology is really starting to drive Tremendous a lot of the communications. Like, yeah. There, uh, one of the uh, big pharma companies last year spent $26 million in e-detailing. Oh, look at that. So that yeah. is uh, an incredible amount of money for yeah. a new technology that is really starting to take over. Mm -hmm. This same report that I was quoting earlier, 67% of brand managers expect to devote a higher proportion of their marketing budgets to digital strategy. To digital. In, in 67. Yeah. In, it, it's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it is really changing the way we do business. Uh, the, 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 there's also an increased awareness of the two-way conversation that yes. that marketing and communications are these days. Yes. Listening to your, your customer base is, is really important, mm -hmm. and that's shown in our industry. We do facilitation of more ad boards than ever before. Probably last year we facilitated more ad boards than I had in the previous three years, mm -hmm. and, and that keeps escalating mm -hmm. uh, because clients want to know what is our what does our customer base think? What do they think about these these changes that we're going right. to make? And they're listening. As much as I design in more ways for them to hear and capture that, they're like on it, like white on rice. They right. say, yes, Paul, we want to do that because we want to hear what they have to say. Right. Which is a good thing. Ultimately, right. in the end, it, it, it moves towards better patient outcomes. Yes. Um, and. You know, I can't remember doing that 10 years yeah. ago as much. And I think the challenge of that is mm -hmm. when you get that information, what can you do with it? Yeah. And how do you turn that information into action yeah. that can help the physician and help your brand?